Hello, my amazing artists. Today, we are going to be creating our very own North Carolina landscape. We're going to have a background, a middle ground, and a foreground. In the background, we're going to include the mountains of North Carolina. In the middle ground, we're going to have the Piedmont area, which is the largest populated area, areas like Charlotte and Raleigh. And then we're going to have in the foreground, the ocean. It extends all the way to the Atlantic Ocean. I'm going to show you some interesting techniques that you can use to color it in. You can create this with whatever coloring supplies you have at home, but I'm going to show you some watercolor techniques. And also, if you have markers, you can turn markers into watercolors, which is pretty cool. And I'll be showing you how to do that today. So have a listen and I'll show you how to create your own North Carolina landscape. The first step that we need to do to create our North Carolina mountains to coastal plains landscape is we're going to turn our paper so that it's horizontal, so the longest sides at the top and the bottom. And then we're going to gently fold our paper in half from top to bottom. So we get a horizontal line, also known as hot dog style. Don't press super hard when you fold it in half because that's a temporary fold. That helps us divide our paper in half, top to bottom. So that'll help us spread apart the different parts of our picture. So we're going to have three main parts to our picture, a middle ground, a foreground, and a background. Um, the, we're gonna start with the middle ground before we add in the foreground or the background. So the middle ground is the middle of the paper. And we're gonna do it right along this middle line that we folded. So right above that line, I'm gonna start first with a pencil and then we're going to trace with a black marker or crayon. I'm gonna draw some mountains. I'm gonna have them overlap a little bit, maybe some tall, some bigger. And this represents the mountains of North Carolina, which is where we live right now. Um, right below that, we're going to add in our cityscape. So that's going to be represent the Piedmont of North Carolina, where we have lots of big cities. So to draw the cityscape, I'm gonna start by drawing some tall, skinny rectangles. We do want to use overlapping. So maybe some buildings are showing up in front of other buildings. Some are just poking behind. You could also uh, try drawing a building um, from the side. So I could draw a straight line, make it look kind of like a letter Y on top, and then draw a straight line from that, connect that to a square, and then draw the sides coming down. So that makes it look a little bit more three-dimensional, but you don't have to. You can make them two-dimensional if you want. Uh, next, you wanna add in a few windows onto the buildings, maybe some details, like I might do a dome on top of this one with a little tower. You don't have to draw in all the windows in the whole building. You can just hint at it. You could draw some straight lines to represent windows. You could draw kind of like a sideways letter L shape to represent windows. When you just add a little bit, these are in called implied lines. Your brain is actually smart enough to kind of fill in the rest of the information and it knows oh hey this is a building full of windows but you don't actually have to include all the windows or all the details next that we're going to add is we are going to add in the ocean representing the coastal plains because north carolina goes all the way from the mountains to the ocean so to add in the ocean i'm going to add in a layer of curvy waves so i'm going to have it curve up and then Scoop back behind. Scoop around, up, behind, around, up, behind. It's okay if you overlap onto your buildings a little bit, especially at this point we're using pencil. And so you can go back and erase and just not trace over those lines. If you want to draw your waves differently, you can. And then my next layer of waves I'm going to have going the opposite direction. So I'm going to have them curving this way. Yeah. 
And then the final piece for our landscape is we're going to draw the setting sun. So somewhere in between one of your mountains, it doesn't have to be the very center, it could be to the side, you're going to draw a part of a circle that's curving up. You can kind of adjust your line until you get a shape that you like. Go in and erase any lines you don't like. And then from this circle, you're going to have the rays of light from the sun going up to the sky. So I'm gonna start at the top and draw a straight line all the way to the edge of the paper. Line all the way to the very edge of the paper. And they're gonna get really big over on this side. And it might disappear behind a mountain and that's okay. Have this one put behind a mountain. Good. Now the next step is to clean up any spots you don't like with your eraser and trace over everything with a black marker or a black crayon, whichever you have on hand. I think I'm going to use a marker this time, but you can use what you have. After you trace with your black marker or crayon, please use an eraser to erase any extra pencil lines. Now to add a little bit of extra interest to the sunset, we are going to draw some patterns in some of the rays of the sun. You don't have to do all of them, I'm just gonna do some. So I'm going to fill this one with zigzag pattern. And then maybe I'll do this one, I'll add bumpy lines. It looks nice to do it maybe in every other pattern instead of every single pattern. Um, I might fill this one with wavy lines. I might add some patterns also to the mountains. I think I'm gonna fill this mountains with circles that could represent the texture of the different trees. And the next step is coloring. You have lots of options for coloring depending on what you have at home. You could use colored pencils, you could use crayons, you could use markers, um, whichever you want to color it in. But I recommend using warm colors in the sky and cool colors on the land and the ocean. The warm colors are red, orange and yellow since we're doing sunset that works well for the sky and then cool colors are green blue and purple so you can use these colors in the mountains and in the water um, so you can use any coloring supplies that you have i think i might use some watercolor paint so if you have that at home you can certainly use watercolor paint but if you don't have watercolor paint that's fine just color it in with crayons or markers if you have watercolor available, you're going to need a paintbrush, a cup of water, and watercolor paints. Um, you first need to get your paintbrush wet, wipe it off on the edge, and then choose the color you want. You want to swirl around a few times gently in the paint. Make sure your brush is plenty wet. And then you can go in and start painting in a shape. When you're painting, make sure you're gentle with the paintbrush. You pull it in one direction you don't want to put it down and scrub it really hard that's not good for the paintbrush so you always want to pull you also don't want to push because that could separate the bristles of the paintbrush when you're using watercolor paint you also want to skip to every other section so on this section is still wet and if i paint this section right here the colors will bleed together i can show you what i mean first i'm going to clean my brush off so it's nice and clean I'm gonna get some yellow, and when I paint the yellow right next to the red, the colors can bleed into each other. So now my yellow section is starting to look a little orangey. So sometimes that looks nice and you want that, but sometimes you don't, so it's up to you. Just know that when the two wet sections touch, the colors will bleed together. And it's your choice whether you want that to happen or not. When you're sticking to just one color family, it usually works out pretty well. Um, because all the colors in a color family, like the warm color family, um, all work well together. So you can mix red, orange, and yellow to make uh, nice looking colors.
When I move to the buildings and the mountains, I'm using a different watercolor technique. This time, instead of using watercolor paints, I'm just using regular Crayola markers. I'm outlining the edge of my shapes with the markers, and then I'm coming in with a wet paintbrush or even a wet Q-tip if you don't have a paintbrush. And when you rub on top of those marker lines, the color starts to bleed into the white paper. And then it looks like you did watercolor painting and you didn't even have any watercolor. This helps if you have a little bit thicker paper than just regular printer paper to do this technique. Notice in the water I layered two colors, blue and purple, and didn't completely color in the waves. That way when I went over with the water, the colors blended together to give it a textured effect. 